Alright folks, hello and welcome to this video example on the properties of the real number system. Please follow along and fill in the blanks on your chart as we look through these five important properties. On the left column it has the property, on the middle column it has the addition version of that property, and then on the right column it has the multiplication version. Let's jump right in. The first property is the commutative property, which says that if you have any two real numbers, and these are all about real numbers, and you add them together, A plus B, is equal to b plus a. Or in other words, you can switch around the order of two things and it doesn't change the value. They still are equal. a plus b equals b plus a. Likewise for multiplication. a times b equals b times a. So for an addition and multiplication to be commutative, we say that you can switch the order of two things and it does not change the value of the answer. One way you might remember this is by thinking of a commute to work. Say you're driving along the road. You go to work. You go back home on the same road. You go the same distance each way. You commute there, you commute home. It's the same value. You go back and forth. You go one direction, you go the other direction, you get the same thing. And that is the commutative property. Just a helpful way to remember it. Next, let's look at the associative property. And again, these are all for real numbers. So when I write these variables down, remember they are generalizations or this uh, variable here, for example, A can stand for any real number. So the associative property deals with any three real numbers. Let's say we had A plus the quantity B plus C. That's equal to, and you could write this all on the same line. I just don't have a lot of space, so I'm doing it underneath. Uh, that is equal to and I just rewrote that, that is equal to the quantity of A plus B plus C. So I would write that all in one line. Uh, similarly with multiplication, this I can fit on one line. A times the quantity of B times C is equal to the quantity of AB times C. And in other words, in short, this is saying you can move parentheses around in an addition problem with three things and it doesn't change the value. You can move the parentheses around in a multiplication problem with three things, and it doesn't change the value. Uh, one typical way you might think of this is as an association. Uh, it doesn't matter who the parentheses are associated with first. If you had, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, Jim and uh, Eric were over there, and then over here we have Bobby all by himself, well, then we could have Jim, Eric, and Bobby. It's still three people. And then let's say Jim decides to go associate with Bobby instead of Eric. Well, we still have the same three people, Jim, Bobby, and Eric, no matter where he decides to associate. So here, no matter which two items you associate in parentheses, here you have the B plus C in parentheses, here you have the A plus B in parentheses, you still have the same value. So if you have all addition and you have three things, it doesn't matter where you put the two parentheses, the two that you group together or associate does not affect the value. Same thing with multiplication. If you have three things and they're multiplied and you choose to group two of them to multiply first, it doesn't matter which two you group first, you will still get the same results. And those are the commutative and associative properties. Now you are going to have to know the names of these, that's why I'm kind of giving you little ways to remember them as we go along, so just keep that in mind. Next up is the identity property. So the identity property of addition actually has a new vocab term. It's going to say that a plus 0 equals a, and that's for any real number a. Adding 0 to it doesn't change its value. Pretty obvious from the equation, but you do need to know that it's the identity property, and you need to know that 0 is the additive identity. Okay, so that's a new term that goes with this property. 0 is the additive identity. When you add 0, the number still stays identical. That's where identity comes from. Similarly with multiplication. The multiplicative identity, can you guess what it is? The number you multiply by that doesn't change the real number? Well, that would be 1. Okay, any real number a times 1 will still equal that real number a. And this number 1, for that reason, is called the, and write this down, multiplicative. Kind of like multiplication, but multiplicative identity. So those are two additional vocab words that go with those properties. Okay, you can multiply anything by 1, it stays identical to what it was. You can add 0 to anything, it stays identical to what it was. Next up, we'll look at the inverse property. Again, these are going to have some...
Next up, we'll have the inverse property, which also has some new terms with it. And that says that A, any number, any real number A, when you add its inverse to it, or an inverse kind of undoes something, it's the opposite, you get back to zero, or nothing at all. It equals a zero value. So A plus, we say negative A, or more properly, the opposite of A, equals zero. So the opposite of A, putting an opposite sign, changing its sign, is known as the additive inverse. Okay, it's a new term you should write down based on this property. Similar to how we had an additive identity, we have an additive inverse. The number you add to a number to get it to add to zero, or as we sometimes say, cancel out and equal zero. With multiplication, you're not going to get anything that will multiply it well, you could get it to multiply to zero, um, but in this case, we actually use a different number as the multiplicative identity. Because remember, the additive inverse uh, gave us the additive identity. Okay, when they add together, the additive inverse, look, it gives you zero, gives us the additive identity, which we said is zero. So the multiplicative inverse is going to give us the multiplicative identity. So what is it? What do you think it's going to be? Multiplicative inverse A times something is going to equal that multiplicative identity, which is 1. And so the inverse is actually just the reciprocal of A. So the reciprocal of A over 1 is 1 over A. That's how we denote the reciprocal, which is actually another vocab word for the multiplicative identity. Multiplicative is spelled the same way as before, but this is the... I'm sorry, multiplicative inverse. I was saying identity. Let me fix that. 1 over A, or the reciprocal, is known as the multiplicative inverse. 1, which we noted up here, is known as the multiplicative identity. So you see, you can get tongue-tied here because the words sound similar, even the properties sound similar. These both start with I. So it's going to take some practice to get them down, but you do need to know them. Closure, I'm going to just write out the notation, but we're going to talk about what it means in class. So I'm not going to explain this fully, but I would like you to fill in the boxes. Uh, with the closure property. This one says that if A, and that little symbol means belongs to S, and B belongs to S, where S is uh, some set, A plus B is an S. And over here it's similar, except uh, if A belongs to S, B belongs to S, and A times B belongs to S. And we're going to practice that in class, so don't worry about the fancy notation. Just get it down for your box. Lastly, we have the distributive property, or distributive laws, as they're sometimes called. For completeness, you should write these down, but if you have A that you're distributing to the quantity B plus C, you'll get the result A times B plus A times C. Similarly, if you distribute over subtraction, you'll get the result A times B minus A times C. And that is the famous distributive property. Those are the five properties you are expected to know, and that sixth one, closure, we'll deal with separately in class. So let's summarize what we've done. We looked at five new properties with general rules. Remember, general means they work for any real number in general. It doesn't matter what you pick, any two real numbers or any one real number, if it's just the A, A plus zero, something like that, these rules hold, or they are, you could even call them laws, properties true statements that always work for any real numbers. We looked at some new vocabulary, additive inverse, multiplicative inverse, additive identity, multiplicative identity. You should know what those things are. And then lastly, we mentioned there's a special property, closure. We use some fancy notation, and we will discuss that more in class when we look at the properties. Thanks for watching this video example. Please rewind, pause, and go back if you need to catch something that you missed. Have a good day.